Michael Cummings here with BlazePod. Welcome to our Logic series. Creating a custom BlazePod activity is easy. The first step is choosing the foundation, or as we call it, the light logic. This is the program type that you will choose to best meet your needs. In this series, you'll learn all about each light logic and the reason why you would choose each one. Today, we're going to talk about the most popular light logic, random. So why choose the random light logic? The random light logic is great for unpredictability training and a quicker reaction time. So how does the random light logic work? Every time a pod is tapped out, the app will randomly select another pod to light up. Go ahead and choose random and let's do it together. You can add several stations and each station will have the same activity running in parallel. So if you have six pods and the activity uses only two pods, you can effectively run three stations of that same activity, each running at the same time. The number of pods is the amount of pods you'll be using for the activity per each station. Therefore, if you are running three stations with two pods each, you won't select six pods. You'll only select two. It's the number of pods per each station. The number of players is also respective of each station. Choose how many players you want to have participating in the activity per each station. The players can also be grouped into a team. We call this teams. You will be able to change the name of each player or team before you begin the activity. If you select more than one player, you will open up the option for competition mode. If you select regular, each player will tap out their color pods with each player trying to tap out as many as they can. If you select first to hit, it will add a competition within the competition. Every time the pods light up, only the first player to tap out their pod will register a hit. All other pods will reset, and all other players that did not hit their pod first will register a miss hit. Make sure to be conscientious when selecting first to hit. It is not recommended to have vastly different levels of players competing against one another. Now let's swipe or tap next and move on to the colors and light rules setting. Selecting more than one color per player advances the activity and will enhance each player's potential for improving their cognitive skills. Remember, we are talking about the number of colors you are assigning per each player. If you have multiple players, each player will have the same number of colors that you selected. Adding multiple colors allows you to designate a function that you want the player to perform when they see that particular color. This can really benefit active memory and reflexive cognition or the ability to be a more flexible thinker. Seeing the visual cue of each pod light up may help improve your spatial awareness and reaction time. The more you use BlazePod, the faster and more efficiently you may be able to respond to visual cues in all scenarios. Reaction time is a three-step process. Your brain needs to first recognize a stimulus. In this case, it's a visual light stimulus. Then it has to process what its next move is going to be. After the processing happens, the body then reacts in response to what the brain chose as the correct course of action. The faster you can recognize, process, and respond accurately is the path towards peak human performance. Next up, choose the player that will be doing the activity by tapping on the name. As Go members, make sure to pick either you, the user, or guest if it's not you. This way you won't mess up your own stats. If you're a pro member, make sure to add each new player to your list so you can save all the results individually to analyze improvement. Another option is choosing teams, which may be a good idea if you have more than one player performing a single player activity. Like this team color catch competition. Another cool feature is that you can change each player's color to their favorite one. If you select multiple players, make sure to have different colors for each player or team for better organization and data analysis. After you have set up the pods, players, and colors, you'll notice the indication lights flashing on the pods that are ready to use. This will help you set up your activity, especially if you are using a fewer number of pods than the number of pods in front of you. If you select multiple colors per player, the pods will indicate that as well. If you select multiple players, then the pods will flash in the player colors 
one after the other with a pause before starting again. This is a great way to make sure you have set up correctly. If you have multiple colors per player, the lights will indicate that as well. If you select multiple stations, station one will light up first with the correct indications, followed by station two, and so on, with a pause before returning back to station one. Now let's move on to lights out. Lights out is basically choosing the way in which the pod's light is turned off. Is it with a physical tap or with a timer? With a timer, the pod will not respond to a hit. The light will only go out after the time that is preset. This is great if you wanna use the pods as visual cues and are not worried about the data captured by each hit. You can also choose a combination of whatever happens first. If the pod is tapped out before the time runs out, it registers a hit. Otherwise, it registers a miss hit. I like to use this function when trying to get someone to increase their intensity and move faster. This creates a sense of urgency and pressure to respond within a certain time frame. It's a great way to intensify an activity. And now to the final setting on this screen, the light delay time. The time between a pod's light going out and when the next pod lights up. In many cases, you'll want the next pod to light up immediately, in which case you'll choose the none option. You can add a fixed delay time if you want the participant to have time to return to an ideal starting position. The random light delay option is great because you can simply choose a range from zero seconds to 10 seconds or anything in between and the app will randomly choose a time between the minimum and maximum times that you set. This option is also great for helping players wait and think before they go and make the right decision as quickly as possible. Or if you want to work on a player's anticipation or response time, this option gives you a true reaction time. Now let's swipe or tap next to finalize the activity. You have three options to choose how or when the activity ends. Do you want the activity to end after a certain length of time? Or maybe after a certain number of successful hits? Or whichever comes first, trying to complete a certain amount of hits before the time runs out? Sounds simple, but carefully consider what works best for the goals and intent of your activity. And finally, cycles. You can think of cycles like sets in weight training. Do you want the activity to run a number of times automatically with a rest period between the cycles? This option is great if you're running a drill for a number of sets before moving on to the next one. Once your activity is set, it's ready to use. You can start immediately. You can manually start the activity from the app or select start on hit. The start on hit option is great if you want to place the device down and get into position, or if you're training a group and want the drill to run self-sufficiently. If you have the pro membership, you can save the activity and use it over and over again or share it. Now go get creative and have fun designing your own activities. Enjoy.